Welcome back to Automation of the Week. I'm Brian Hayes. Every Tuesday, we release another video showing you step-by-step -step how to build out an automation in Salesforce to improve your processes. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a renewal opportunity with products and contacts associated with it. So it'll get a little bit advanced, but we'll start simple and then build up from there. So it's really common that companies would wanna create a renewal opportunity automatically when the initial opportunity closes. And so in order for us to do that with Flow, we should create a couple additional fields in Salesforce to help manage that process. The first one we're gonna create is a checkbox on the opportunity record, and we'll check that checkbox when we've created a renewal opportunity for that deal. The reason for this is just to be cautious to make sure that we're not accidentally creating multiple renewal opportunities for a deal if somebody happens to reopen it and then closes it again or modifies it in some other way. The second field that we'll create is an indicator on a product record as to whether or not this should be included in a renewal opportunity. It's really common for companies to have you know, onboarding services associated with, say, a software subscription or something along those lines. And if they're going to renew, you don't need the onboarding service again or professional services. So you might have multiple line items, but not all of them need to be copied over to the next renewal opportunity. So if we've got a flag on our product record, or we're using a product family to help indicate whether or not that should be included, we can incorporate that logic into the flow when we create the renewal opportunity. So let's start by adding those fields. You can do that in the object manager. So click on setup in the upper right hand corner, go to object manager, and then we'll pull up the opportunity object. Under opportunity, click on fields and relationships, and then here, I'm just gonna make sure I don't already have a checkbox for renewal opportunity. I don't. So let's create a new one here. This will be a checkbox, and I'm gonna call it renewal opportunity created. The default value should be unchecked, and then click next. Set any limitations on that field level security that you might need, and then hit next. And I'm gonna remove it from the page layouts. It's not really something that needs to be seen. It's just there on the record for our automation. So we don't accidentally create more than one renewal deal. Next object we wanna update is the product object. So search for product here. And then under fields and relationships, I'm gonna include another checkbox that will be uh, titled included in renewals. Click next. And I'll write include in renewals. There we go, include in renewal ops. That will be unchecked as well. Then hit next change your field level security settings if you need to. And I am gonna add this to the product layout because we wanna make it easy to configure. Then hit save. Now you don't have to create this additional checkbox. I mean, the other way you could do it is with product families. You know, maybe you've got a product family for you know, subscription licenses and then one for professional services. That's another good way to filter that out without having to create extra fields and extra data within the system. I don't really have established product families in this development org, so it's a little bit easier for me just to create that checkbox. But on your side, if you don't have to create a field, then don't do it. Now that we have those two fields, let's create our flow. So go down to flows, click new flow, and this will be a record triggered flow because we want it to run when an opportunity is marked as closed one. For your object, choose opportunity, and we'll have this run whenever a record is updated with the conditions that the stage equals closed one. Now this is important here. Do we want this to run every time a record is updated and meets the condition requirements or only when it's updated to meet the condition requirements? And the answer is it's really the second one. We only want it to run when it's updated to meet these requirements, when it's updated to be closed one. Um, otherwise, if somebody edits a closed one deal to change the close date or something like that, it's going to trigger again and create another opportunity which we don't want but we still have the risk that somebody might move this deal out of closed one and then back into closed one, which certainly can happen if somebody is a little too enthusiastic about that deal that might be coming in this month. So let's add another condition, and this will be our checkbox that we just created. Renewal opportunity created checkbox equals false. So in our flow, not only will we create our new opportunity record, we're gonna check that box and make it true so even if somebody then moves it out of one and back into one, it's not gonna create another deal. And then click done. Our first step here is easiest. It's to create that renewal opportunity. So go ahead and select create record, call this create op, 
and we're going to create one record and we will use separate resources and literal values for those fields and the object that we're going to create is an opportunity so we're going to add a number of fields here now keep in mind what fields are required so we definitely need a count id we're definitely going to need a name for this opportunity we're going to want a close date certainly the amount field will be important now the opportunity owner is required it's going to automatically set to whoever marked that opportunity closed one but perhaps that's not right maybe we want the old owner should be the new owner or it's also possible that you've got somebody else who manages renewals uh, so you could do a get step before this to get the person who's got the title renewal manager and, and put their id in here so for now i'm going to add the owner as well and then I'll, I'll just set it to be whoever the current owner of the opportunity is there we go i think that does it for our required fields on an opportunity but your org certainly might be different and if you miss one you'll get an error and you'll find out pretty quickly so for the account id we want this new op to be related to the same account so scroll down under values go to your global variable here for the opportunity that started our flow and then you can select account id from the list so it's just copying over the account from the old op into the new op for the name we could just copy over the name and we would do that the same way go and come down to our global variable search for name and then you could even add to it we could do dash renewal that would be fine as well uh, just note that on the next renewal opportunity it'll say dash renewal dash renewal which isn't the best experience so instead of just adding dash renewal at the end, it might be better to add the year instead. And I'll show you how to do that in just a second, because we're going to start working with dates here when it comes to the close date. We don't want to just copy over the current close date of that opportunity. We want some future close date. And you could add some logic here around the term of that contract. Maybe it's one year or two years or something like that. In this case, though, I'm just going to assume that we have annual contracts. And so our close date in the future will be 365 days after today or after the, the close date of that current opportunity. So to calculate that, click new resource and choose formula. So this is going to be close date plus 365. The output of this formula will be a date. And then in the formula builder here, we could insert different resources. So this is where we now go to that global variable look for our close date there it is and then we can just add 365 check syntax and there we go what's our last close date plus 365 days that's going to be our new close date but again you probably want to modify this a little bit depending on what contract lengths you have and you might even be adding the contract end date in a custom field on the opportunity that was just closed if you did that, then, then that's really easy. You could just take that contract end date, put it in the close date of your renewal opportunity, or maybe contract end date minus one, something like that. Go and hit done. So we've got our formula has now been placed into our close date here, but we still have the issue of making our name work for multiple renewals in the future. So instead of dash renewal, let's change this to be the year, the word renewal, and then the name of the account. So to do that, what we really want is a text template. Makes it a little bit easier to manage. But the first thing we need to get is what is the year of this particular renewal? Well, we can actually pull the year from our close date plus 365. So we can take this formula and we can modify it a little bit just to deliver us the year. So to do that, we're going to leave this create step. So let's just fill in a couple of these other fields and then we'll create our extra resources to generate our name dynamically and we'll come back and, and insert it. So for amount, let's just pull the same amount from our current opportunity. That's pretty easy. And then for owner ID, we'll do the same thing here as well. Go to global variable, select owner ID and go ahead and put in the owner ID value right there. At this point, probably good to save it so you don't lose your work. Okay, now let's create the resources we need for our dynamic name for our new opportunity. The first thing I want to create is another formula. So create new resource. We'll select formula here, and this will be new close date year. The output of this formula will be a number, and then we can insert our formula close date plus 365, and then we can just pull the year out of that. So there's a function called year, 
And here you can see a simple example of it. You've got year, open parentheses, close parentheses, and in between those is the date value. And so then it'll just return the year of that date. So we already have our you know, future close date here. So let's just wrap this in year with open and close parentheses. Check syntax there. We do not need any decimal places, so make that zero and then hit done. Now that we've got that formula, we can create another new resource. This will be a text template. And this is going to be our opportunity name. Now with text templates, you can either create them as rich text templates or plain text templates. For any sort of pure text value, like a name within Salesforce, make sure you choose plain text. Because if you choose rich text, you can make it look pretty here and change the color and make it bold. But none of those things will come through in Salesforce. Instead, you'll just get a bunch of HTML elements uh, muddying up your, your writing. So choose view as plain text. And then here we can insert our new closed date year. We can also insert a value for our current opportunity name. And then in between there, we can write whatever we want. So we could do, so we could do year space renewal dash opportunity name. So this would potentially be 2024 renewal dash rotive subscription or whatever happened to be there. Click done. Let's go back to our create op step and swap out the name here for our text template. Here it is opportunity name under that text template category. Then click done. Our next step is going to be to get the contacts that were related to our previous opportunity and add them to our new opportunity. And then we're gonna do the same thing with products. What products were attached to the old opportunity? Let's add them to the new opportunity. We needed to create the opportunity first though, because we need to have that record exist in the database in order for us to relate contacts to it or relate products to it. So our next step is gonna be a get. And we're not actually gonna get contacts, we're gonna get contact roles. So I'm gonna call this contact roles from old opportunity. Go ahead and search for the contact role object here. It's actually called opportunity contact role. And here we can say, give me all contact roles who are related to the opportunity that was just closed one. So here we can see on the contact role object, and that's that record that relates an opportunity to a contact. Uh, it has a lookup field that looks up to the opportunity. So on that contact role, we want all of them whose opportunity ID is equal to the opportunity ID of the record that triggered the flow. And you could add additional conditions here if you wanted to filter out some of the people, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Then we'll get all of our records and we're gonna store all the fields on that junction object. Click done. Our next step is going to be to loop through these contact roles so that we can update them. So essentially we're gonna get each one of those roles one at a time and we will update the opportunity that they're related to and then create a new collection with them. And that way we can create these new records from the system. So we're not actually going to update these existing contact roles. You know, we don't want to change those. They exist in the database. Instead, we're just going to start with them. We're going to tweak the data a little bit, and then we're going to create new records. So the only thing that we need to change is what opportunity that role is related to, because we want it to be related to our new opportunity. So I'll say loop through contact roles here. The collection variable that we want is our opportunity contact roles from our last get step. And the order doesn't really matter if we go first item or last item. So for each, let's add an assignment step here and we will update related opportunity. For our variable, we now have a new record variable called current item from loop. So this is great. This is one of those contact roles and this is how we can change any of those field values on that item. Click on that record variable and then you can see all of the fields on that contact role record, and we can choose opportunity ID here and change it. So we want the opportunity ID to actually be equal to the ID from our new opportunity, the one that we just created. And one thing about creating records in flows is that it will automatically create this variable with the ID of the record you created. Pretty convenient. And here it is under variables, opportunity ID from our create op step. So select that. That's our update. And then we'll add one more assignment step here. This is gonna to add to new collection. Under variable, create a new resource. This will be a variable resource called updated contact roles. The data type should be a record. And make sure you check the box to allow for multiple values. 
Then under Object, choose Opportunity Contact Rules and hit Done. Change the operator from Equals to Add and then select the current item from Loop. That is our current contact rule, the one that we just updated. So what this is going to do is going to take our current item that's in the loop and it's going to add it to our new collection. And then as many contact roles as there are, it'll loop through them all and add them to our new collection so that we can then add them to the database at the end of the flow. Now outside of the loop, let's create those new records and associate them with our opportunity. So go ahead and choose create records here and we'll say create contact roles. And from here, we're going to create multiple records. And we already have our record collection variable created. It's our updated contact roles collection. Select that and hit done. So essentially what we're doing with this loop is we're getting all those contact roles from the old op. We're then going through each one of them to update them with our new opportunity ID. And we're then adding that to a new collection, a new basket essentially. Uh, and then we're updating or creating all those contact roles at the same time. And then the final thing we're gonna do is essentially this again but we're gonna do it with opportunity product records. So just like contact roles are a junction object between a contact and an opportunity, we have opportunity product records, which are a junction object between products and opportunities. So add another step here, we're going to get records, and now we're gonna get the products. The object we want is not actually the product object, we want opportunity products instead because that's what's actually related to the opportunity. And then we'll select opportunity ID, should be equal to our global variable ID. There it is. Just like our last get step where we got all the contact roles that were related to the opportunity, now we're getting all the products that are related to the opportunity. And so one option here that you could have is, remember we created that checkbox on the product record to say whether or not something should be included in a renewal. Well, when you choose a get, like this, we can't see the product record from here. All we can see are the fields that are on the opportunity product. And so we can't actually see that checkbox on whether or not it's checked. So what we could have done is created a formula field on the opportunity product record, which just pulls in the value of that checkbox. And then we can add it to our filter here. So we're only getting back those opportunities that have that checkbox on the product record checked. Um, I'm going to show you a different method. That's one way to do it, but it increases the number of fields within your system. And it's a good thing to do if you're worried about having lots and lots and lots of line items that you're getting in this action that you don't need to get. Um, so there's always a trade-off there. Generally, you want a, a simpler org. So what we can do is get all the products related to an opportunity and just filter the ones out that we don't want, which I'll show you in a second. Or you can create that formula field and don't get the products you don't want from the very beginning. In most scenarios, we're not talking about hundreds of products that are related to an opportunity. We're usually just talking about a handful. So I prefer to get all of the products and then filter them out. But you might have a different situation. If you're, if you're selling a lot of different line items in Salesforce, definitely consider that formula field solution instead. So we don't have any extra conditions here. We're just gonna get all of those opportunity products. We'll get all the records and we'll, we'll store all the fields. Click done. Our next step here will be to loop through them again. I'll just call this our opportunity product loop. For our collection, I'm going to choose opportunity products from get opportunity products. Click done. And now what's different about this loop from the other is that we're going to add a decision. We're going to essentially just bypass any product that does not have that checkbox to be included in our renewal. So we'll just loop through them, but we're not going to take any action. We're only going to update the products that we want to include in the new renewal opportunity. So I'll call this include in renewal, question mark. Default outcome will say no, and the new outcome can be yes. For our resource, go ahead and select the current item from our loop, our opportunity products. And now what we can get to are the fields that are on the product that's related to the opportunity product. So here's all those opportunity product fields, which we could have filtered in the get, but we can get even more now. We can see all the fields that are related to it on that product. And that's where our checkbox is, include in renewal op. Go ahead and select that. And if it is equal to true, we want it to go down the yes path. So now everything that goes down the yes path, we're gonna add these same steps right here. Update that related op, add to a new collection. Uh, and then if it doesn't go down the yes step, we'll just go down the no path and it'll loop through without any changes. Let's go ahead and add those assignments. Update opportunity product field. So we'll take our current item 
from our loop through opportunity products. The one thing that we want to change here is our opportunity ID. And again, we'll set that to the ID from our new opportunity. Opportunity ID from create op. That looks good. And then we'll add another assignment step here to add to collection. Create a new resource. This will be a variable again, and it will be our updated opportunity products. Choose a record for the data type, allow multiple values, and then choose opportunity product. And just like before, we're going to add this to a collection. So create a new resource. It'll be a variable. Make sure that it is a collection variable so it can have multiple records in it and that it is a record variable for opportunity products. And then under the operator, choose add. And for our value, choose our current item from the loop, our opportunity line item. And then our final step here is to create those opportunity product records. We're going to create multiple records and then we can choose our collection, which would be our updated opportunity products. Hit done. Hit save. Well, actually, you know what? There's one more step. I almost forgot. At the end of this, we want to update the triggering record. We want to make sure that checkbox is checked so that we don't create more than one renewal opportunity accidentally. So the nice thing is we can just update our triggering record here, search for our renewal opportunity checkbox, and update that to true. There we are. Hit save, and now we can test it. If we look at this opportunity here for Jake's Wood Shop for cleaning supplies, we've got two products here mini lotion bottles, I'm going to edit this product and make sure that it does show up for renewals. There's my checkbox, include in renewal ops. Go ahead and hit save. So with this opportunity, we've got two products, the SLA Gold and the mini lotion bottles, but only one of them, the mini lotion bottles, should show up at our new opportunity. And we have two contact roles, Jake Lund and Alexis Rose. Our amount is 150K. Our close date is July 31st, 2022. So let's mark this as closed one and see how it goes. Okay, so here you can see we, we ran into an error. And the problem is we had a required field that was missing, stage name. So let's go back to the flow and make that quick update, and then we'll run it again. So in our very first step here, go ahead and add an additional field. This will be for stage name. And of course, we can set that stage to qualification. But you could set that stage wherever you'd like. Oftentimes, renewal opportunities automatically get created into the proposal stage. Go ahead and save that new version. And now that we've identified an opportunity that's a good test opportunity, go ahead and click Debug, and we can choose that from here. So we'll look at Jake's Woodshop. I'm going to skip those starting conditions and then click Run. All right, looks like we got almost all the way through to the end of the flow, but we have an, we have an issue with the Create Opportunity Products. So if we look at that, we've got an issue with the creation of our opportunity products. It's saying that you can specify only a unit price or a total price. You can't specify both. And that's just a result from us copying over all of the values from the opportunity product. So let's go ahead and fix that. We can fix that by coming into our update opportunity product. And this is where we updated the opportunity ID in that product to be our new opportunity. Let's also change the total price and we'll just we won't fill that out. So we'll go to the current item of our opportunity product, go to total price, and we'll set this equal to blank. Then hit done, hit save, and let's debug that again. Okay, no errors. So that looks pretty good. Now let's activate this and see how it does in our developer environment. We'll come back to our opportunity record here. Gonna mark that as closed one. And then we can take a look at the new record that gets created. All right, it closed just fine. Now, if we come back to Jake's Woodshop account, we should see a new opportunity record. There it is. But we do have a slight issue. You can see here that our number 2023 was formatted in the thousands. So it's 2023 renewal dash Jake's Woodshop cleaning supplies. So I'll show you how to fix that in a second. But let's look at this record and make sure all of our related records are still good. So if you look at our products, the only one that got included was the mini lotion bottles not the other product that didn't have the checkbox. And if you look at our contact roles, we've got both Jake Lund and Alexis Rose included. If you look at our close date, it's been updated to 2023, almost worked perfectly. Our only problem is the formatting of this number. We don't want the comma in there because it's a year, not a number. So let's go back to the flow and let's fix that. Go ahead and click edit flow and we can take a look at our formula. Now the problem with our formula is that the output data type is a number. And so it's formatted like a number with the comma. We don't actually want it to be a number. This should have been text. 
So instead, I'm gonna copy the formula that we created, and we can't change the data type after that formula has been made. So instead, we'll create a new formula, and this one will output as text. So this will be our new close date year text. Check the syntax on that. Now the error saying is that we're giving it a number, but it's expecting text. But this is pretty easy for us to convert a number into text. Just wrap that formula in the text function. So now we have text, open parentheses, our old formula, and then close parentheses. Check syntax again. You can see now we're gonna take that number, we're gonna convert it to text even before we put it in the text template. Then hit done. And now let's update our text template. Okay, there we go. Under opportunity name, instead of us referencing our old formula here, let's remove that. And we can select our new one, which is new close date year text. Click done, hit save, go ahead and activate it. And let's do a new test. So we come here to this other opportunity. We have uh, Herb Ertlinger's winery. I'm going to move it out of closed one. And then you can see we've got our SLA bronze and we've got our Genwatt diesel 1000 kilowatts uh, product. So I'm going to take our service level agreement of bronze and I'm going to make this something that is renewable. So let's go to our product record here, click edit, go ahead and check that box. So it's included in renewal opportunities. And then we can come back to our opportunity. So if we mark this as closed one, we should see just the SLA show up and we should see all four of these contacts be included as well. Hit closed, closed one, and hit save. Our new opportunity was created successfully. Let's go to the account and see if we can find it. There it is, 2023 renewal dash farmers co-op of Florida consulting services. If we look into this, we can see the only product on this opportunity is the bronze SLA, but all four contacts are included. That'll do it. I know that was a long video. It gets a little bit complicated, but I hope it was helpful. And I hope you can see ways that you can apply these same techniques to other sorts of automations within your org. If you appreciated this video, consider one of our courses at academy.rotive.io. Thanks for watching.